thank you for allowing me to uh, speak today uh, for, a few for a few moments with you all. Uh, first of all, when it comes to redistricting, <clears throat> let me describe my district. Uh, Ten years ago, when I first got elected in a special election in February, well, the election was held in February 2000, but I didn't take my seat until April of 2000 because of lots of uh, court challenges uh, and the fact it was a very close election. But my district that I was elected to in February of, or in 2000 uh, consisted of three counties, uh, all of Ontario County except for one town, Tom Baker, uh, all of Yates County, and then three small towns in Livingston County. But I could drive that district uh, by automobile in about a, if I went from the furthest part of the district to the furthest other part of the district, it'd take about 45 minute drive. That was my district before redistricting 10 years ago. Now, our district team comes along, and now I have a new district. I now represent five counties, uh, parts of Ontario, all of Seneca County, nine towns in Cayuga County, four towns in Onondaga County, and one town in Cortland County. In fact, I was there on, on uh, Monday for Memorial Day parade in the town of Crowell. One town. 1,180 square miles territory that I have to cover. To go from the furthest western point of the district to the furthest eastern point of the part of the district by automobile without stopping and obeying the speed limit would take me approximately two and a half hours just to drive from one point to the other point without seeing one constituent. Five counties. I share that territory with three congressional representatives and five state senators just to give you a flavor. The district I love represent, but quite frankly, it's very tough to spend time everywhere just to ensure uh, geographic size of the district. Now, there is a uh, plurality of Republicans and Democrats in the district, but I think around eight or 9,000, so it's not a huge number. Uh, you know, I, I have been reelected. Uh, every two years, but I've had opponents all but, I think, two times that I ran. So I've, I've had opponents in, in races. And so it's not like it's an automatic uh, incumbent uh, re-election. And also I didn't get to draw those lines or have a say in those lines other than the vote that came up uh, on the floor the state of Summit. Now my district is not the worst geographic district when you look at other districts across the state. So I don't even, you know, uh, complain too much because there's a five or six other or seven other districts that are just much larger from a geographic perspective. Uh, I can tell you I think the first district I represented was a much more concise uh, competitive district from an election perspective. I'll be the first to admit, even though I've had opponents uh, in the new district I represent now, uh, it's tougher for opponents because of the sheer uh, size of the district and the geography and where you live makes a big difference because of the population, where the population centers are, gets up. Now, one could say if you're an incumbent, isn't that great? I say not so great because I think uh, our goal as a representative is to get as close to the people we represent as much as possible. And in upstate New York, especially when we have to drive through our districts and not walk city blocks in the city of New York, uh, it's a huge uh, undertaking and a very costly one. And certainly, uh, I think it, it's not a, a service to our constituents to have that, that would either. The first redistricting map uh, 10 years ago that came out from the Assembly Majority had put together, I think it was either 14 or 16 Republican members and incumbents against each other as a starting point. Uh, I don't think that has anything to do with, uh, shall we say, nonpartisan hmm. redistricting. And it was, you know, very upsetting, not just to the legislators, but to the communities. What's what's my representative going to look like? You know, and I'm not even talking about size or shape, I'm just saying, who's it going to be? Can they represent me? Uh, et cetera, et cetera. In Ontario County, currently, there's, I sure, and from the state assembly, there's two of us that represent the entire county. Seneca County, as I mentioned earlier, I'm the only assembly representative for Seneca. Cayuga County, there's three of us that represent the county. 
And uh, Cortland, I think there's three of us. In Onondaga, it's at least two, three, four, it's either four or five of us that represent Onondaga County. When you're representing a town, it's one thing. When you're representing a county, it's, it's quite another in terms of having multiple representatives. Who's going to show us security of the water principally in the state assembly for the interests, for the political interests and governmental interests of the counties that we reside in? So to me, this process has always been political. Uh, it's certainly, uh, historically, the majorities in both houses, both houses have you know, tried to draw the lines to their best interests from a political electoral perspective. Uh, and that's why we've always pushed for a nonpartisan approach as much as you can make it nonpartisan. Uh, certainly, uh, we lost, uh, the Assembly Republicans lost, I think it was either four or five seats uh, 10 years ago by the stroke of a pen, not by a competitive election. And right now, based on our calculations, uh, we would have at least five to six more seats right now uh, in the state assembly if, if these were done in a, shall we say, not if the mass were drawn in a non partisan basis. So I think there's plenty of evidence to say that the current process is jaded. Uh, certainly, depending upon which side of the fence you're on, if you're in the majority versus the minority, I know it may sound self serving to say we have to have a, a nonpartisan. Uh, process, but I think the more we can have competitive elections everywhere, I think it's better served the constituents that we serve in New York State. Now, I will tell you that I'll be the first to admit, selfishly, that, and I don't think I would be rare for the incumbent to say this, is that if I didn't have a competitor, well, that's not so bad, right? <laughs> and that's true, you know, especially when you get in, you run for office, and you're working so hard, and you say, you know, I think I'm doing a great job, and you know, why does anybody want to run against me? Oh, but that's not what democracy is. And when you step back aside and say, what's really in the best interest to have <coughs> kids to have competitive elections? And this, is, this goes uh, because I think we have a better dialogue on the debate of the issues, uh, fundamentally, uh, foremost. I think it keeps a legislator on their toes. And what I mean by that is that they're working and being omnipresent in their district. Now, I'm one of those people that just works 24-7, so I never worry about that. You don't have to motivate me to get out and meet my constituents. But I can tell you horror stories from a constituent's perspective where districts that are so safe, like in New York City, that the incumbent assembly member has absolutely no worry about competition unless that person gets primary. So they're going to pretty much do what they want. I, in fact, I've had people come up to me and say, I can't get this assembly representative from New York City even meet with me because they have no fear of competition. And let's face it, the American way is competition, isn't it? In every facet of our life, business, uh, the more competition we have, the sharper uh, people are going to be in price, cost, delivery, and that's no different uh, than what the state legislative uh, process should be.